All right, welcome back to Sweetly Savory. So today what we're gonna be making is carrot cake oatmeal bread. So this is kind of a follow up to my carrot cake oatmeal overnight oats that I've made in the past. And I made that for breakfast for about a year. And then I discovered this bread. Um, I was kind of crunched for time in the morning eating my breakfast and this is like a really wonderful alternative and it's still that carrot cake flavor that we really love and uh, it's really good for um, prepping your breakfast in the morning. What I got here are all my ingredients and I already started peeling my banana. Um, what I'm going to do is put half of my ingredients into my food processor and then uh, do it like in a second batch. Um, so first I'll go over what I've got. My oats here, I've got my carrots because it's carrot cake, and I've got my walnuts and my golden raisins just like before. I've got some uh, soy milk or regular milk if you want. And this bread doesn't call for any eggs or anything, so we're going to be using peanut butter. And uh, you can use whatever kind you like, and you can use tahini or uh, like cashew butter or whatever else you got on hand. Um, but regular old peanut butter is what I'm using, that's my favorite kind. Uh, we've got some baking powder. We've got the basic flavors for this of cinnamon, ginger, ground nutmeg, and clove, and ground clove. Um, those are the same like four family flavors that I use in my carrot cake overnight oats. And I bring them to this party over here. And I think that's it that I've got. And bananas, because the you got to bring some moisture to the party too. So let's go ahead and get this started. And you want to make sure that your banana is broken up because otherwise it could be a gunky mess. And that's why I'm doing this in batches in my food processor. Well, that was super handy until they all fell down. Because when I made this in the blender, it was really caked up and the first time that I made it, I put everything in there all at once and then I thought the blender had died. The blender is old, let's face it, but it's, um, it's easier to do it in batches. So what I've got is my first banana. I'm going to put in my milk now, a total of one cup of milk. So I'm just going to do half right now. Do our peanut butter. And I forgot spoon for that. And we're going to need a total of two-thirds cup. Glad I bought more this week. Now we need some oats. And a total of two and two-thirds cup of oats. It doesn't have to be exactly level. But you don't want to have overflowing of your oats. And these are going to be old-fashioned oats. I think I need a smaller food processor. And we'll just do this for now. This is having a better result than I thought. And I'm super happy that I put it in the food processor this time instead of the blender. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my baking powder. Powder, not soda. And our cinnamon. I'm going to start off with a quarter of a teaspoon for that. And cinnamon is very potent, so if you put too much in, you're definitely going to taste it. Just like in those carrot cake overnight oats, if I had put too much cinnamon in one night, it you could definitely taste it. It was pretty cinnamony. Ginger, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pat that in. And cool. And I probably did an eighth of a teaspoon of the clove, just because the clove is also pretty potent, just like nutmeg and cinnamon. So let's give this a whirl again. All right, so everything is totally incorporated and it's not as like super blended as it has been in the past for me, but I kind of like that. Oh, and this is so much easier to get out. So pro tip, if you have a food blender, even if it's this tiny, tiny little thing, use this for your bread. 
for this recipe because it makes it so much easier to get out. Before I um, make the second half of my recipe here, I'm just going to go ahead and add in my carrots and walnuts and raisins. Now these are my favorite thing to buy in the produce section, the shredded carrots. Let me be like Roger Rabbit and count the ways that I love shredded carrots. Our walnuts. I'm just going to break them up the same way that I do for everything else. And if there's some that you find are going to be the right size, then no need to break them up anymore. And we will fold and incorporate all the rest of these little bits in here afterwards. I just didn't want to do it at the top and have a giant mess. And you don't want to put this stuff in your blender because then it'll break down way too much. Last but not least our raisins. Now I'm going to get started on the second half of this batch. That will be just enough time for you to like and subscribe to Sweetly Savory. So you go ahead and like this video down in the description below. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. My bell is too far away from me right now. But um, <laughs> uh, be alerted when new content is launched on the channel, Sweetly Savory. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back in a few short seconds. And the baking dish that we're using is an 8x8 eight eight glass. And I should have greased it with butter. And I forgot to. That's okay. We'll just see what happens. And I've got my oven set to 400. Now the recipe calls for um, 350. But since I have a gas oven, I raised that temperature up to 400. And uh, I'm gonna bake this for about 50 minutes and I'm gonna rotate it about halfway through for even baking. And again, the recipe calls for something different because everybody's ovens are a little bit different. So the, the original recipe does call to bake it at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Use discretion. Um, if you know your oven and you feel like you can bake it at that lower temp because it's electric, by all means, go right ahead. But for a gas oven, I'm gonna bake this at 400 for 50 minutes. Other this bread doesn't look like much quite yet. I mean, most breads don't look appetizing. But once this comes out of the oven, it's gonna be a nice golden brown. It's so freaking filling too. Like you wouldn't think, because you're having this tiny little slice. So you can slice this up, and for two people, it'll last four days. And if it's just for yourself, it'll last even longer. And I recommend only eating one portion at a time because it is so filling. The oats and the carrots and the raisins and the nuts, like everything all together, the peanut butter and banana. It's just really amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven for 15 minutes and then uh, halfway through, I'll give it a little spin, we'll take it out, take a peek at it, and make sure that everything's doing A-OK. -okay. Then we'll uh, see where we are. So we interrupt this video with a very important message about another method for this banana bread. Well, oatmeal, carrot cake, banana bread goodness. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to mash up the bananas and then we're going to grind up our oats in either a food processor or a blender and it's going to be all the same amounts of ingredients as previously stated in the video just a different method uh, if you don't have a food processor or um i just found this to be easier to be quite honest so what i'm going to go ahead and do is just peel my bananas and let's get started on these oats same two and two thirds cup. Now you might be thinking that this seems a little convoluted to be using food processor and 
a bowl and dirtying a spatula and a banana masher. But to be honest, this is an easier method. It might be a little bit dirtier, but it's definitely worth your time. And if you're gonna be prepping your food, then you might as well have the best possible method instead of, I don't know, stressing out and having everything kicked up in your blender or your food processor, whatever tool you're using, this just makes it easier. Now you can also buy oat flour. We use oats for so many other things. It just makes sense to buy them not ground into flour and use them myself. And you're still gonna get that same cakey bread consistency at the end. So I've got my flour. I'm gonna go ahead and mash my bananas. Put in some of my flour here and still the one cup of milk. And just like previously, I'm gonna add things incrementally or in little bits to make sure that everything is mixed together well. And it's two thirds cup of peanut butter, but I've discovered that's just really like two heaping tablespoons. It's like that much. Now, as you can tell, I use this masher thing for everything. For the chickpea burgers, I use it for mashing potatoes. And it works really great for breaking down bananas. Because I have always used a fork to break down bananas in the past, but I found that this was a lot easier. It stabilizes the banana so you can actually break into it. Whereas a fork, you're just working with the, the four prongs to try to crush something and it. it's a little bit trickier. And just adding until everything, all of these things are incorporated to your bananas. And then we'll add the rest of our flavorings. Incorporated. And now we're going to add in the remaining ingredients. We've got our flavor agents and we've got our carrots, walnuts, and raisins. So I'm just gonna go ahead and same as before. Most importantly, don't forget to grease your pan. So in the last clip, I had forgotten to grease my pan and that made a really big mess at the end of the week and I was super frustrated. So remember to grease your pan. You can use butter or Crisco. I've used both and either one works fairly well. And as you can see, the mixture of this bread is still the same, has the same density, and it will have the same density when it comes out of the oven. So we're still gonna bake it at the 50 minutes, and all the ingredients are down in the description. You can follow the, um, the steps there. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off. Stick it in the oven and we'll be back when the bread is ready. So we will see you in a little bit. So we just took the bread out of the oven and as you can see, it's nice and golden here. And I've learned the very hard way to just let this cool completely before slicing it because otherwise you're gonna have messy, uneven slices and Nobody likes uh, having crumbles uh, for the bread. So we're gonna let this cool completely. I usually just stick it right into the fridge and I have a cover that I put on this and it just, you can store it right in there. That way each morning you can just take out your little piece of bread and there's your breakfast right there. So right here, I've got a little image of what the bread is gonna look like when it's finished. It's nice and dense and very filling and super tasty and flavorful. It's gonna keep you full all the way until lunch. So I really hope you like this carrot cake. 
oatmeal bread version. Uh, make sure to like this video down below and subscribe uh, to Sweetly Savory. And we'll see you next time on Sweetly Savory. Thank you.